What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Vlad and on this channel we discuss different apparel printing techniques. Hope you guys are all doing super well. I know it's been a while since I uh, posted a video and I've been meaning to do it. These are all excuses. It doesn't matter, right? Anyways, I'm back. I'm going to release a brand new series called Getting Into DTG. Um, we just purchased an Epson 2100 from Equipment Zone. Uh, to give you guys a little bit of a backstory, um, I've been looking at DTG printers in general for over a year now. I guess almost since the day I started, right? So I want to say about a year and a half ago or, or so. Or maybe a little bit more than that. Um, I've been looking into DTG printers. So many on the market. Epson, Brother, Omniprint. I mean... There's a bunch of them. Uh, Equipment Zone happens to be a local company. Um, I guess they have a few offices, but their main headquarters is in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, uh, which is only about 20 minutes from me. Um, and they pre-COVID, they used to do these uh, events. They were called Lunch and Learns, and they had different uh, in-person events um, in their showroom. Uh, and I went to a bunch of them, right? And uh, I'm sure, like, I went to a bunch a bunch, a bunch of them. Um, I'm sure these people were like, who is this guy? Is he ever going to buy anything? Why is he coming here and eating our lunch for free and getting free t-shirts printed every time he comes? But anyways, fast forward about a year or so, uh, we finally pulled the trigger. Um, and, you know, honestly, it took us that long because we were, we're a new business, right? We didn't necessarily have the money to just buy a new piece of equipment uh, like a DTG printer. Then COVID happened. That set us back. Um, but here we are. Anyways, the past is the past. We're going to look at the future. In this series, uh, I am going to walk you guys through the whole process of getting started in DTG. Um, I wasn't able to create a video of us unboxing the actual printer. Uh, I did put out a a, a short clip explaining that the printer showed up a few, you know, a little bit earlier, about a week earlier than I expected it to, um, and the trucking company had, you know, brought it outside our store, left it on the sidewalk like they were supposed to do, um, because they don't offer inside delivery, um, and we don't have a loading dock, so they left it outside, which was fine. Um, I, you know, got a few people helped us, and uh, we were able to get the printer inside. Um, and on a stand. So I have done absolutely nothing else to the printer and I've been holding off doing anything to the printer or turning it on uh, because I did want to film this video. So let's jump into it. Cool guys, so this is the Epson 2100. Uh, this thing is beautiful. Um, so we just got it on the stand. The only thing I did put on was these two hooks. Um, and they actually just slide right in here. And that holds uh, the frame. I'll show you that, guys, in a few minutes. Uh, there was also one more thing. There was a lock that was placed right here on the side of the platen. And that holds um, this part of it from uh, moving during transportation. Uh, and I guess getting damaged. Otherwise, we still did not put any ink in it. We didn't do anything. Um, so, the manual says to remove all the blue tape that was on it. So there was tape holding the doors. There was some tape, uh, I guess, holding the print head. Uh, we removed all the blue tape. Okay, the next thing that uh, it says to do is attach the ink waste lines. Um, I'm gonna have to pull the printer out, bring you guys around back to be able to show you those. All right, guys, so this is the back of the printer. You plug in the power uh, right here. On the other side of this, you plug in your printer cable. Uh, you can also network this uh, printer, which I have no idea how to do, nor am I gonna try. Now, so down here, if you can see these, there was two black plugs. You remove these two black plugs and you will get this hose with your printer. This hose actually is connected 
to another hose that has the same thing on the other side. And then at the bottom, it goes into a, a waste container. So the waste container comes with uh, a lid and you simply um, remove the lid. They say to tape it on with some of the blue tape you get out of the printer. Um, you cut a little X in the plug uh, and you insert. Now, uh, the hose does come really, really long. Um, so you have to take a pair of scissors or a knife and just kind of trim it uh, to the size that works for you guys. So we just did that. Let's get into the next thing. All right, you guys, the next thing you get is the platen and a platen cover. Uh, now, I don't know that you need this platen cover. Um, actually, I think that I made a mistake putting it on here um, because you need to print a nozzle check um, on the platen to make sure that all your nozzles are firing correctly. Back, uh, sorry, actually, the electrician showed up he was finishing up. I had some new power installed. I had two new 20 amp circuits installed. Uh, one to power another heat press. Um, and then I wanted to have a dedicated line for the uh, printer. So, uh, back to what we were saying. The platen uh, has these two uh, little uh, metal pieces on the bottom. And they're super easy. They just uh, line up. And slide right in place um, and then there is a hoop uh, that after you put the shirt on you cover it with the hoop they also give you this um, little tool um, to help smooth out uh, any wrinkles that you have on the garment uh, once you pressed it so that's uh, that's handy so that's when it comes to the platen so guys, I think uh, I'm going to open up the ink cartridges. Um, they come in uh, 250 uh, milliliter, not sure if you can see that, uh, 250 milliliter uh, starter cartridges. Um, the other cartridges are, if I'm not mistaken, because I bought a few extras, so the other ones are 600 uh, milliliters. So we will get this ink loaded up. Let's get into it. Alrighty guys, so uh, there are two ink doors on this uh, printer. One is located right here and the other one is located right here. Um, on this side you're going to put two white cartridges and one yellow cartridge. So uh, the white ink needs to be, all the ink uh, according to Epson, it needs to be gently shaken. So after you shake it, I guess it simply, I hope you guys can see this, um, it just slides and snaps right in. So let's shake this one a little bit, give it a little bit of a gentle, gentle shake not sure what that means. Uh, they don't want you to shake it too hard uh, and create a bunch of air bubbles inside that'll end up in the lines. Um, so that's why you uh, lightly shake it. Uh, so the color cartridges don't need to be shaken uh, on a daily basis. Only the um, whites do, but they suggest shaking them. Okay, so we got that taken care of. Uh, over to this side, let me flip the camera around so you guys can can see that. Um, let me also just show you one thing. Um, on both sides, you have, we're using the five uh, cartridge uh, system. Um, so your, you have your magenta, your cyan, your black and your cleaning cartridge. Um, so this is our black focus. 
we'll give it a little bit of a shake slide the black in one-handed uh, I guess that goes in there let me just start with the cleaning cartridge the cleaning cartridge is the only one that does not need to be shaken uh, next is cyan okay uh, they're super easy to pop in. They slide right in. We will. Uh, yes, we will. There also is another slot. Not sure if you guys can see it. That first slot. Um, I am not sure what it's for. Uh, but I actually will uh, find out. All right, guys. So um, we are going to power this bad boy on. I have the camera in my hand. Let me actually set you guys down right here. Sorry about that. Hope you can see me. Uh, I am just going to take the power cord. Now, they suggest not to plug it directly into an outlet. Um, they actually want you to either put it into a surge protector or like a battery backup uh, type surge protector. God forbid the power goes out, uh, the batteries kick in and you can safely shut down the printer. Um, so that's what I bought. Um, the one I bought is from uh, Cyber Power. I got it on Amazon. I think it was $60, $70, something like that. Um, it said to let it charge for eight hours before uh, plugging anything into it. So I set it up yesterday and I think it charged. So I am going to plug in the machine. Awesome. So here goes nothing. You hit the power button. Uh, the machine will turn on. Now there is one thing that I actually need to look into and I am actually going to pause the video so I can make this call. Um, there's a cleaning cartridge or I think it's called a charging cartridge um, that comes in this little bag and I know that you need it for the setup. I'm not sure if you need it right now or later so I'm just going to reach out to Equipment Zone ask them that question, and then I'll have an answer for me and you guys uh, as soon as I get back. Alrighty guys, sorry about that. So I did speak to um, Equipment Zone and they told me that the machine will prompt me uh, when to do it. They also referred me back to the installation guide that comes with the printer, um, and it's actually really easy. So what language we want, so English. So it does give you all these options. Uh, French, Italian, Dutch, uh, Portuguese, Spanish, Netherlands, Russian. Uh, I don't know if this is Korean or Chinese. Uh, that might the first one might have been Korean, and and this one might be Chinese or Japanese and Chinese. Yeah, so I think the first one is Japanese. Whatever you got a bunch of languages, you guys can figure it out. We're gonna hit English. Okay, we're gonna set the date and time, February 10th, and the time uh, it does use uh, a 24-hour clock so like military time it is 9 uh, 37 9 37 9 okay um, we measure in either meters or feet and inches so here in the US we use feet and inches uh, it's saying the printer cover is open so prompt me to do that. Okay, ink charging. Set empty waste ink bottle and press OK. So yes, we did that prior. Do you want to empty waste ink bottle? If yes, press OK or to reset waste ink counter. Press OK to reset. Got it. All right. 
Maintenance. Remove and shake the white ink cartridges. If you shook it, press yes. Okay. Um, so from what I understand, uh, and let me actually show this to you guys so you can see it. Sorry about that. Uh, so that little gray piece there uh, needs to be replaced with this um, for it to charge the inks. All right. Got it. Okay. So that is in. Remember to save this piece. We'll have to replace it after. We're going to close the cover. And we are going to so you guys can see what I am seeing. Uh, we're going to press start or OK for it to start charging the inks. So it says uh, 33 uh, minutes or 33. Yeah, I think it's 33 minutes uh, is what it takes to charge the inks. So I'll keep an eye on this. Uh, and when it's done, guys, I will uh, show you guys what the next steps are. All right, guys. So the uh, printer is almost complete, uh, has almost completed the charging. Sorry about that. Uh, customer walked in interrupted so um, it has completed charging and it is prompting me to remove the charging unit uh, and replace the charging cap so we're gonna go ahead and do that um, we're gonna open this up pop this bad boy off and then I guess pop this thing back on Perfect. Okay. So now that we've done that, we press OK. Attach protective cover. Okay, we did that. Close the print cover. We did that. And, uh,. So this thing uh, is now garbage. Uh, it is full of ink, if you can see, um, white ink. From what I could tell, not sure if you guys can see this. Give me one second. Let me, oh, there we go. So it is full of ink, um, and we can now uh, get rid of this thing. So now it is performing a cleaning. Um, and the cleaning takes about 10 minutes. So we're going to let the printer do its thing. Um, and I will get back into it as soon as it's done cleaning. Uh, we can go ahead and perform a nozzle check. And as long as that nozzle check, uh, is good, that's it. The printer is set up. So let's give it another nine minutes. I'll see you guys soon. All right, sorry about that, guys. The battery on the camera died. Never a dull moment here at Printing on Main Street. So, what I was saying beforehand was that I ran a nozzle check. Uh, some of the nozzles, it, it looked super blurry to me, and some of the nozzles were missing notches. Um, so they suggested running a cleaning um, to correct that. So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, it's going to take about three minutes longer um, we're going to let it finish, and when it's done, I'm going to run another nozzle check, and hopefully that fixes our problem. Now, my pre-treat machine has not arrived yet, so I really wanted to do a test print today. Um, so I decided I'm going to do it on white, on a, a white shirt with no pre-treat, um, and see what happens. Um, and then when the pre-treat machine comes, I'll do another video unboxing it and showing you guys how that process works. Um, so we did the head cleaning. Uh, I'm going to run another nozzle check. So you hit maintenance, nozzle check, print nozzle check, okay. 
uh, it's telling you to put a piece of paper but they suggest actually printing it directly onto the platen uh, because you won't be able to see the white ink on a uh, piece of paper so press OK it's doing its thing alrighty guys so uh, I think we got the nozzle check right so, uh, we're gonna print on a white shirt I'm gonna get the shirt loaded alright guys so um, we sent the file over from the computer uh, we got our white t-shirt uh, this is a Bella canvas uh, we're going to place it on the platen just make sure that the t-shirt is straight okay right, let's tuck our shirt inside and we are going to hit print let me pull you guys off of here um, and show you what's going on so right now it says please wait the print head is moving side to side not exactly sure what is taking so long oh there goes the shirt Looking good through the cover for now. This is a white shirt, so it doesn't have to lay down any white ink. Let's bring the camera back over here so you guys can see it. Um, So guys, I mean, uh, right off the bat, a few things, and this most probably has to do with the shirt not being pre-treated. Um, even though you don't have to necessarily pre-treat on a white shirt, um, the colors aren't like super, super bright. Uh, I'm going to throw this onto the heat press uh, and dry it alrighty so um, it is dry uh, let me give you guys a close up so you guys can see the actual print alrighty guys so um, I think Overall, for the first print, and that's without me being able to dial in any settings, um, I think that it's really, actually really, really nice. Um, there are a few things, um, like I said, and that this probably has to do with the shirt not being pre-treated. Um, the gray is not so like I don't know how to explain it. it it's it's super nice um, it just doesn't pop right it's kind of muted the colors um, and that most likely has to do with the pre-treat um, but for our first test print on this brand new uh, Epson 2100 F2100 I think this print came out amazing um, let me know in the comments what you guys think. I'm going to jump back on the computer. Alright guys, so uh, just to recap, we set the printer up, we loaded it um, with all the ink, we charged it, we did our uh, nozzle checks, we had to run a head cleaning, actually two head cleanings. Um, I actually know what the problem was. 
I thought that the platen was, so when you do a nozzle check, the platen has to be set to P. It's a height adjustment. Uh, I actually thought it was set on P and had it set all the way to eight, uh, which lowered the platen. Um, and since there was space between the print head and the, the nozzle check, it was shooting, it was looking like I was getting some sort of ghost thing. Uh, so when I put it on the correct position, uh, and ran the nozzle check. It came out perfect. Uh, we printed the shirt. Uh, since our pre-treater didn't show up yet, we did a white shirt without pre-treat. In my opinion, it came out really, really, really well. Um, I had some DTG shirts done for me uh, three or four years ago, um, and those colors were also muted, and I think that was because um, they weren't pre-treated as well. Uh, but I'll tell you, that I still wear some of those shirts today. The colors haven't faded or cracked or anything. So if we could get that type of quality for our shirts three, four, five years later, what more could we ask for? Uh, with screen printing, uh, with transfers, with... Uh, yeah, mostly screen printing and transfers. After 50 or 100 washes, you're going to start to get cracking. Um, and there's the phone ringing like always, messing me up. Sorry about that, guys. That was actually uh, tech support calling me back. Um, and he went over a few things. So the muted colors don't necessarily have to do with the shirt not being pre-treated. Uh, he did give me some pointers on how to uh, get a more vivid print without using pre-treat on a white shirt. So maybe I can make a video at a later time on white shirts uh, with just CMYK using no pre-treat. Uh, but overall, I just wanted to talk about the um, process of buying the printer uh, and getting it delivered, installing it, getting it set up, uh, and all the way to doing that first test print that we just did. Overall, uh, the process has been uh, fairly simple, right? So, you know, uh, they answered all my questions at Equipment Zone. They were super helpful. Um, they told me what to expect as far as when the printer gets delivered. They told me what extras I'm going to need to purchase uh, before the printer gets here. Um, they were even nice enough to cancel because I, I had a stand that I didn't think the printer would fit on, uh, so I ordered a stand from them, but when the printer got here, uh, their stand didn't come yet, and um, it actually fit on the stand perfect. They were nice enough to remove the stand because we never got it uh, from our invoice, um, which was very, very nice of them. Um, you know, it saved us a few hundred bucks, I think 600 or 700 bucks. So uh, save us quite a bit of money that we're gonna actually use probably to buy some other size platens um, and things like that. But for this setup video, <coughs> excuse me, for this setup video, I cannot be happier with the way everything turned out. Um, I'm going to run a few more test prints uh, and possibly stick in some more B-roll into this video so you guys can see the process. Um, I look forward to each and every one of you joining me on uh, this DTG journey uh, that we're just getting into. Um, and as I learn, you guys will learn. And if we make mistakes, we'll figure it out together. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like it, uh, please give this video a thumbs up. Uh, leave any comments below and stuff that you may want to learn or questions that you may want me to uh, try to answer for you guys. And if you haven't had a chance to, please hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell notification so you're notified every time I release a new video. Thank you guys so much.